During 1940, London was the main target for air raids. But the Germans knew they had to change their tactics and attack the industrial cities of the north. Major manufacturing cities such as Birmingham, Manchester and Sheffield were all targeted. Sheffield was a prime target, mainly due to its world-renowned steel-making capabilities. At this time, Sheffield was the only city in the UK producing 18-inch armour-piercing shells. The city's most renowned steelworks in the East End were the main targets for the Germans, along with Tinsley Park Colliery and the Orgreave Coke Works. Whilst Sheffield expected an air raid, nothing could prepare for what was to come. On Thursday, the 12th of December, monitoring stations picked up signals being laid across northern England. On their way from northern France were 151 HE 111s, 122 JU 88s, and 7 DO 17s. With the incoming raid presumed to be for Sheffield, a yellow alert was issued at 6.15pm, followed by the purple alert at 6.45pm, and finally, the red alert was sounded at 7pm. Just 41 minutes later, the Germans arrived, dropping the first bombs over Norton Lees and Gleadless. In total, the first wave dropped 16 high explosive bombs on Sheffield, as well as over 11,000 incendiary devices which are designed to start fires. The air raids were expected to be centred around the East End steelworks, but instead, the Germans headed straight for the city centre. As explosions swept through the city centre, hundreds of buildings were damaged or destroyed. The moor was severely damaged, along with the high street, where buildings turned into infernos and trams were completely obliterated. Shortly before 11 o'clock, a 500 kilogram bomb fell on the CNA building, completely destroying it. Located just across the road from the CNA building was the Marples Hotel, which suffered some damage from the blast. People inside the Marples seeked shelter and headed down into the building's cellar, where they believed that the building's five stories would protect them. Less than an hour later, the Marples Hotel received a direct hit, causing the entire building to collapse. A huge rescue operation began, where over 70 bodies were removed from the wreckage. Bombs continued to fall on Sheffield well into the early hours only stopping just before 4am. The cold winter weather made the situation even more uncomfortable for families seeking safety within their Anderson shelters. By 8am, the sun was rising over Sheffield and revealed the true extent of the damage. But the people of Sheffield were not defeated, clearing up debris and helping families who had been made homeless. The East End Steelworks had escaped relatively unharmed and could continue to manufacture vital parts for the war effort. Until... Three days later, on the 15th of December, the Germans were back. The German Pathfinder unit arrived over Sheffield at just before 7pm and dropped over 11,500 incendiary devices. More raids arrived afterwards and steelworks such as Brown Baileys and Hatfields both suffered damage. The resulting fires were huge and could be seen from as far away as Coventry, Wrexham, Lancaster and Middlesbrough. Despite the damage, 
the Steel City remained undefeated, and production at Sheffield's world-famous steelworks resumed. During the two nights of the Blitz, over 3,000 houses were damaged or destroyed. Over 1,500 people were injured. And tragically, over 660 people lost their lives. Sheffield had taken one hell of a beating, but the city and its people remained defiant and rebuilt, making sure that Sheffield remained the Steel City.